In this video segment, we will demonstrate how to initially set up and configure a 5069 controller. In our previous unboxing video, we covered some of the key features for the 5069 platform. Now we will install this unit into an existing chassis so we can power it up for the very first time and begin our setup. Now that we have taken our PLC out of the box and we've installed it into an existing chassis here, you can see that we've wired the mod power and the SA power terminal blocks to give our PLC power. It has powered up and it is showing that it has no firmware and it's flashing uh, red for the OK, meaning that it doesn't have any configuration or programming inside of it. Uh, once this is installed, I've added two I.O. cards and I've inserted our end cap on the right hand side to block those metal leads to make sure nothing comes up and touches those. Um, the other thing to note is the PLC will come initially with an SD card that is not fully inserted. Uh, we are going to leave it uh, out for the time being um, and we have it in our REM position, so remote run position or remote control position. Uh, from here, we will need to uh, set up the IP address using boot P because the PLC is now in a DHCP mode. And we will then flash the firmware to bring it up to the newest one. And then the final thing to set up with the 5069 is whether you want the dual ports on the bottom to be uh, DLR or linear, which means both ports have the same IP address or if we want to set them up as separate IP addresses. So we will set the IP temporarily, then we will flash the controller, and then we will work on adding uh, that last configuration. Now that we finished our hardware setup, the first thing we need to do is assign a temporary IP address to our PLC. We're going to do that using the boot P DHCP. And we are going to select our Ethernet connection, select OK. And we're going to see and we're going to verify and that is our 5069 PLC. So we're going to double click that and we're going to give it a temporary address of 192.168.1 dot 11 okay so now that you see the MAC address has a temporary IP address we are going to go into RS links classic we're going to quickly create and configure a new driver which is going to be Ethernet devices I'm going to add new we'll just leave it as Ethernet 1 and the IP address we're going to add is 192.168 1.11. Click OK. Close. So now we created our new driver. We're going to open our driver and our driver is going to browse to look for the IP address of the PLC. So it should take just a few seconds here and it should recognize and find our PLC. Now that we waited a few seconds, it recognized and found our PLC. So we're going to right click on the PLC and we're going to go to module configuration port configuration and we are going to statically assign the IP address so that our PLC will guarantee to keep that IP address even after we flash the firmware or do anything else at this point. So we click apply and it's going to download the configuration to the PLC. Now that's done, we're going to press OK and we can now get rid of our boot P tool. Now that we've closed the boot P tool, we are going to open control flash so that we can flash the firmware on our PLC. We are going to use the control flash plus utility. 
And right here is going to be the path in which it's going to search and how many levels down within that it's going to search. So we are going to select the Who's Active button to force it to browse and find our updated PLC. Now that the software has used the Who's Active button and refreshed to find the most active things, there are two key points I wanna point out here. So the first thing is this new software connects directly to the Rockwell interface. And if you're not connected, it shows as the yellow symbol, which means you are available, but not signed in. You can select the sign in button, which brings you to your Rockwell single sign on page. You will sign into your page and you are now connected to the download center. So if there is a firmware that you want to move to and you do not have it locally on your computer, it will show a blue arrow. So today we are gonna to go to the newest revision of version 32 software and our PLC is a series A. So I'm gonna select that, but I do not have that software on my computer, which is the blue arrow indicates. Right now, you can see that the software is 1.065 and we wanna bring it up to version 32. So we're gonna hit next. It's gonna give you a warning that you are going to flash, which will wipe all the configuration out of your existing controller. You're gonna click close and we're gonna go back to the controller itself. So the one thing we need to do back on our physical equipment before we flash is we are gonna open up the uh, trap door here. We're gonna look and we need to put our toggle switch into the program mode. So now that the program mode has been enabled on the toggle switch. We are going to go ahead and flash the firmware via the software. Now that we're back in the software, we are looking to make sure we have the proper checked and we are going to start our flash process. Uh, this process could take anywhere between uh, 15 to 20 minutes typically to execute. Now our controller has finished flashing, so we'll go ahead and click close and done. And it's gonna rebrowse and look again, and it's gonna verify what firmware is in the controller for us. And there you go. So now in device of our controller, we have 32.013. Once we have done this, we need to go back to the hardware. We need to go ahead and place the PLC back in the remote position, which is in the middle. Uh, now that we're back in the remote position, we can go back to the software where we will set the mode for the dual port on the 5069. Now that we're back at the software, we are going to click on a different one and click back just to make this refresh and browse for our controller again. And we're going to right click and go to the module configuration again. But this time you can see right here on the bottom that we have ethernet IP mode. And right now we are in dual mode. So you can change the IP mode here between linear and dual IP. So for our application, we're going to change it to linear DLR, press OK. And it's going to let you know that it's going to change and assign the IP address of the port that we gave to both ports. It'll take a few seconds, but you can see on the left hand side that the PLC is actually rebooting. Uh, so it loses communications temporarily and it'll wait for that communications to reestablish and to let us know that it has finished making the change. Now the PLC has cycled power and has assigned that IP address to both ports. So we're going to press OK. And at this point, we are done. Now that we have finished with the software, we have finished our out of box setup for the 5069 PLC. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any of your ESNE account managers or specialists.